Hi, it's Terry Sweeney, Contributing Editor with Light Reading. Welcome back to this series of conversations. We're talking now with Terry Guo, VP of Product and Co-Founder of Lotus Flare. Terry, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. Now, you were at both Facebook and Microsoft for a number of years in similar product roles. Um, what had you leave Facebook and leave to start Lotus Flare? There were... See, I left in 2014, um, and uh, really there were two driving forces behind why I left Facebook. The first one was I, I saw a business opportunity. Sure. Um, and really, uh, if I was when I was at Facebook, I went through some kind of the time where Facebook went through these super high growth period. Facebook was really good at doing two things. One, they were really good at building scalable software and infrastructure, and then running them cheaply. Second, they were really good at growing their user base. So, and at the same time, I was also working with a bunch of mobile operators when I was in my role at Facebook. So really the opportunity we saw was how do we bridge those two worlds together? How do we bring what Facebook does to the mobile operator world? Sure. And that was the premise on which we started Lotus Flare. Okay, so, so yeah. excelling in innovation and growth seem like those are, those are good skills to have regardless of your company. Uh, you obviously brought those to Lotus Flare. Talk a little bit about what what the product is, what what the remit is for Lotus Flare, and and how you're carrying that out. Yeah, if you if you think about the mobile operator software stack or infrastructure, it's made up of three parts: radio network, core network, IT, and user interface. Right. When we started out, you know, our goal was broad. We wanted to say, how do we redo the entire software infrastructure? But of course, we, we can't bite everything at the same time. So we focused on the IT and user interface portion of it. The goal was very similar. The goal was, how do we, if we had to reimagine what the IT stack looks like for our operator today, if we had the chance to rewrite it, what would that look like? Um, and that's, that's, the, that's how we thought about, you know, the, the building of, of, of our product. And over the last six years, we've actually, you know, built this stack um, mm -hmm. and with the focus on the IT part of it, uh, we made it um, simpler. We made it cheaper to operate. We made it, made it more extensible um, and we made it um, much more flexible. So future proof because operators or business are changing all the time. And we wanted to make sure that they can react to the ever changing kind of business needs. All right. Um, as, as you look at the, the, the 2020 landscape, um, you, you talked about uh, simple, uh, affordable, and extensible. What other trends do you see reshaping this, this landscape that we find ourselves in right now? Right. We, and we see a lot of stuff. Um, first is, I think most people see this, um, a, a lot of operators are already going through this transformation where they're trying to move away from physical interfaces, storefronts, moving into more digital channels. Uh, this, this pandemic is actually making that, uh, accelerating that need. And if you, if uh, it's, it's no longer a kind of nice to have, we say it, it's, it's more becoming a business continuity. Uh, um, the, the other thing we see is, um, of course, everyone talks about 5G. So I think 5G is definitely a trend. Every, all the operators are looking at, Hey, um, one, how do I, uh, how do I, how do I capture the value that 5G is going to create? Mm -hmm. um, one of the things we do with our stack is we are trying to build a flexible um, platform that allows operators to actually innovate and capture the value upstream. Because if you think about back what happened in 4G, operators spent a lot of capex, build out a lot of infrastructure. They, but all a lot of the value was captured by people like you know Netflix and Uber and Facebook. Uh, really, I think for a lot of operators, the question to answer is how do I capture that value for 5G? One other thing I would say is eSIM. We actually are very, um, we're, we're, we were optimistic in terms of eSIM. We see that the market will be around 50% penetration by um, 2025. So meaning wow. half of the devices would have eSIM capabilities. eSIM is both an opportunity as well as a challenge for operators. Opportunity in the sense that now, uh, I think there's a lot of very interesting experiences operators can create. We, we talk about moving from 
uh, sim centric, sim centric. So connectivity moving from sim centric to people centric. I think eSIM can enable that. The challenge will be, hey, people are going to switch easily. People can switch from one operator to another uh, with just a click of a button. How do you build that loyalty uh, across your base? So I think that's going to be a challenge. All right. Real quickly, how else do you see Lotus Flares products helping telecom operators? Um, good question. I think one of the things we see is um, we have this stack built for mobile operators. But as we were building it, one of the things we, re we realized recently is the stack we've built actually doesn't, is not just for the core wireless business. Okay. It works equally well for some of the adjacent space. Um, so the way we actually want to like, the analogy we always talk about is we are, if, if, you, if, if, if you know Shopify, Shopify has been growing, um, you know, they grew 10x over the last year. As a small or medium sized business, you want to do e-commerce on, 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 on the web or on the internet. You have to use Shopify as your platform. We have been talking about Lotus Flare as the Shopify for bigger enterprises. Okay. So enabling operators to be able to put their business online, uh, uh, digitize their business. But where we can help operator more is all of the operators are looking to expand outside of wireless, right? So this stack can help them get into space like TV or stream service or okay. broadband. So it's one single stack that allows them to do all of this. And, and the, the value that creates is you can offer things like a triple play or, or quad play. Right. With, with so many organizations relying on key performance indicators, can you tell us a bit about what the KPI impact has been with your products on your customers? You know, we we we've, we've uh, we have a lot of really great case studies around what impact we're able to make. Just to kind of talk a couple, uh, talk talk to you about a couple of these. One is, you know, we engaged this this uh, operator in Asia. They were going through digital transformation. One of the questions they asked is, how do we get more users to interact with us on digital? So that was the challenge, and we essentially went in deployed our platform, but also worked alongside of them to really grow their digital footprint. Uh, the impact we were able to make there was over the three years, we we're able to grow their digital footprint by 10x compared to, so that was one really kind of thing, something we're really proud of. The other one is um, more of a, a deeper integration. So we have, as part of our stack, we have uh, a charging and, uh, and policy engine. And that piece of software or technology traditionally is very, very expensive and hard to integrate. Um, so we've, you know, one of the things we did is that piece of technology now runs in the cloud natively. So we can deploy that anywhere and be serving an operator in a different, completely different country. So one of the deployments we did was exactly that. So not only did that reduce their operational cost by 50%, it also made their um, business process a lot more flexible because of the capabilities we've built into this new charging and policy engine. Wow, uh, good stuff there, Terry. Thanks, thanks for walking us through that. And thanks for joining us today for this conversation. Thanks, Terry. We've been talking with Terry Guo, VP of Product and co-founder of Lotus Flare. This has been Terry Sweeney for Light Reading. Thanks for joining us today.